Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Well, we do the show every week over seven years we've been doing this show. It's a business show if you haven't listened to our show before. And what we try to do is we try to bring on somebody that can either teach us something about business or is a founder or a creator of something new that you can learn about before anybody else does. So you can try to take that information and try to use it, hopefully, in your own business to help you become successful. That's our goal every week. And our show is called Ask Brian, A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N, even though most people spell Brian, B-R-Y-A-N or B-R-I-N. But we have somebody on the show that understands why Brian is spelled with an E, and she's my co-host, Tracy. Tracy, you there? I am here, and I am ready to go with the E's exceptional E information. All right. Our resident <laughs> E expert. Ooh, I gave one away. Oh, that's okay. Um, I have great energy for this today. So we're just all, already starting out, out having fun. But the really, the, our most important E, and, um, and, and our most important E actually has her daughter in the studio with her today. And that is our engineer. So yay, uh, it's bring your daughter to work day. I know. <laughs> well, she lucked out. You know, she's got a day off of school. So she's here uh, monitoring and, and um, attempting not to have goldfish crackers on the on the board here so we're having fun i'm sure jerry will love <laughs> jerry will love that yeah <laughs> <laughs> no we'll try we we'll, would we'll, we'll try to keep it a secret but i think the cat's out of the bag so anyway no, uh, thank you Tracy, to our but we have two e's yeah. then because we have the engineer no mm-hmm. clapping and then we have an eit engineer in training oh there we go I'll, I'll, oh Oh, now I love the new E when we can bring one in. That's I'll, fantastic. I'll clap for that. E I T. That is that is that is that's great. Okay, and then the next one that comes into the category of education is our expert, and our guests are absolute experts in what they do and how they do it. And if they follow the mathematical formula that we like to present, which is the the standard industry standard definition of expert is that you have worked a minimum of 10,000 hours in your business category or your field, and that usually comes out to be roughly about 40 hours a week over the course of 50 to 52 weeks a year. So that would, if you're, if you're a mathematician, would say, okay, well, that's probably about five years. But we have never had a guest on this show up to this point that has ever just worked 40 hours a week when they were starting a business. So we think that's probably closer to a three-year average if you're working your fanny off like most of our experts do and have, and have done. So absolutely relying on our experts for the amazing Education for the entrepreneurs. So, Peter, well, entrepreneurs is are you? Well, I was going to ask you if you're excited about any of the other E's. No, but I have a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> And I, I happen to know that you're actually not in the studio today, and so I am pretty sure that wherever you are, they probably thought that was a little odd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting the looks all over. They're going, what is wrong with that person? Maybe he has to go to the mental hospital. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, my God. Well, I, I, something tells me that's not the first time my experience has ever happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess going, you know what? what did I get myself into? I have to call Heather. But anyway. Yes, exactly. Well, and I mean, I, I want to show some empathy for you, but I don't really know that you deserve it because you've been on vacation I don't even know what in Hawaii it means. for like three weeks. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know you don't narcissism. know what it means, but most people do. I know what narcissism is. <laughs> narcissism, I know. Well, because you were exposed to that on your vacation. <laughs> or <laughs> I not. I don't know. True. <laughs> I have no idea. I wasn't there. But what I do know is we have a fantastic guest today, and we should probably get there. <laughs> I think so. I think so. He's probably wondering, what, what did I get myself into? Anyway, Kevin, you there? Yeah, I'm loving it, by the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> but we do have you on tape saying that, so you can't you can't deny it later. <laughs> and, and, and there's another E there because Tracy will say, "Don't encourage." With another E, encourage him. Anyway, um... yes, don't encourage his bad behavior. Yes, I do say that quite often, actually. But anyway, usually just not with the mic in front of me. <laughs> well. Kevin, you have a great background, and, and, and I would like you to tell people a little bit about your background before we get into your current vent- venture. So can you give people a little bit about your background? Please, yeah. Oh, me me or you? Yes. You. You. Yeah, so your hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. So happy to be with you. Um, I, I started at a little coffee company called Green Mountain Coffee Roasters in the mid-2000s, and we bought Keurig. Um, at, at, at about that same time and had a wild and crazy uh, run. Um, and I was chief innovation and chief strategy officer until our exit about uh, six years ago. And then, um, and then post that, we've started this wild and crazy K-Cup brand that we're going to, that we're going to talk about today. Wow. That, 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 that is very, very impressive. Now, uh, what is a key strategy officer do? So I must have misspoke. I said chief strategy officer, so corporate strategy. A strategy. Uh, yeah, acquisitions, M&A, um, innovation, et cetera. And so um, did you start with the company when they began, or did you start after they had already uh, had a little momentum? Yeah, so good question. So the the super cool founder Bob Stiller started Green Mountain Coffee. Didn't say roasters when he was a, a twenty year, eight year old young man, and he had retired to a little ski area in Sugarbush, Vermont, and went to a coffee shop called Green Mountain Coffee, where he read the Wall Street Journal every morning before he went skiing. Prior to that, he sold Easy Wider rolling papers, which hopefully your <laughs> listeners know what what you do with those. Um, yeah, but I no don't. Want to, to, you know, no, no, no tobacco allowed. Dot dot dot. Exactly. Exactly. He sold that when, in his late twenties for um, about eight million dollars, and um, wow. uh, then launched the Green Mountain Coffee phenomenon. He's an amazing human being. Wow! 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 And so uh, you were there, and then uh, they bought Keurig. Is that correct? Keurig. They yeah, bought the, them or. Yeah, Keurig's really, really fun. So there's 115 million U.S. households. Ninety, about half a million, have a coffee maker of some sort. Keurig is now the primary brewing system in 41 million uh, of those households and drove all that amazing growth. And they were, Keurig was founded by three entrepreneurs in Boston. And actually, the reason a K cup looks like a K cup is when they had their initial meetings to found the company. That's the capsule that the Ken salad dressing came in. And they said, oh, my God, this might actually work to do our single-serve coffee dream. And anyway, in the mid-2000s, the private equity, excuse me, the venture capital firm was at their seven-year exit. And um, and, and they were just a tiny little company at the time. So we um, leveraged the opportunity at that point to buy them and, and merge the two organizations. Wow. And that, that company went public or, or, or stayed private? So Green Mountain uh, was public since the late 80s. And then as we acquired Keurig, it was public. And then so we were public all through until the um, uh, private equity sale six years ago. Then, then that organization, uh, Keurig Green Mountain, bought the Dr. Pepper Snapple Group. So I was about – so it's oh, now wow. Keurig Dr. Pepper – so I was about four and a half billion of revenue at the time, Peter, and they're now about thirteen and a half billion, uh, doing the beverage for for every need and every occasion play. Well, for full disclosure, I have a curing machine at home. So, anyway, um, yeah. Otherwise, that's, that's, we can't do the inter- Otherwise, we can't do the interview. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. See you later. Have a nice time. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> so how did you go alone? and start this own brand that you have Cambio or did you bring some people along that you had at Green Mountain or how did that all come about? Yeah. So super interesting question. Um, I'm obsessed with triple bottom line companies and I know we'll talk about that during the 
during the broadcast today. But our our um, uh, our to do list included a, assembling a dream team of the most senior, experienced people in the K Cup industry, and reimagine. And our mission is to reimagine the iconic K Cup for the next twenty five years. And that's the path that we've been on uh, for the last four and a half years. So when you when you say that, are you referring to different varieties of the coffee, innovations? Uh, what are you referring to specifically when you make that coffee? Yes, yes. So um, and, and my partner and I, um, as, as we founded it, um, it's important to cut contextually. There are 60 brands, six zero brands, and 800 SKUs of, of wow. coffee that are in K-Cups, Starbucks, Pete's, Dunkin's, Green Mountain, Lavazza, uh, Kirkland, Good and Gather, et cetera. Pretty much every major league coffee brand is in, is in, um, is in K-Cups. And so our opportunity, though, is a, is a data-driven uh, opportunity. And here's, here you'll be able to tell I'm a total marketing strategy nerd. But the, the, the 21% of existing K-Cup consumers, which are illuminated by recent Harvard Business Review research, which revealed that 88% of today's grocery shoppers wish that they are looking for brands that, quote, help them do good, end quote. And for us, 21% of existing K-Cup buyers are called the Hopeful Life Balancers, which we can unpack if your audience is interested. And they're, they, they share that query, which is they want to buy a K-Cup brand without sacrificing taste or price that shares their values and helps make the world a better place with each brew, basically. And that's wow, Cambio, wow. which is Spanish for change. So we're out to change the K-Cup industry one delicious cup at a time. So I do have a question when you're mentioning all those brands. See, I also happen to be a, uh, an intellectual property attorney on the side. And so yeah. my question is, is a patent owned by Keurig and they allow other companies to use the K-Cup? Uh, or yeah. how does that yeah, work? Gr- yeah, great question. So. We, the, the K cup was, um, which is a patented, which is a trademark term, K cup, Keurig, owned by Keurig. Um, that, that pat, that there were a series of patents from the invention up until 2013, at which point they, um, they terminated. They ran out. So now today, um, about 85% of all the K cups are made by, uh, the fantastic Keurig organization that would include Green Mountain and Starbucks and Pete's and Lavazza and Duncan's about 15% are made by um, other brands doing some form of K cups because the, be, uh, because there's no longer patent protection. So anyone can be in the, in the business basically. Wow. Wow. That, 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 that's also something uh, very interesting. Uh, so, yeah. I thought the patent, though, could have been longer. I mean, when did they get that patent? I mean, I, I didn't think it was been around more than the mid-'90s. When did that come Yeah, they, it, they were 17 years or 19 years, whatever that is. I, I, I forget the term, but back up 19 years from 2013 is when they were issued. Because, I mean, uh, as an attorney, I would have said, why don't we make a slight change that can only be used in the current machine, and then uh, we have a new patent. But that's me. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. I try to innovate. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Good. Yeah, the, 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 that's very interesting. And so, any it's kind of like a generic drug. Anybody can make it now. You know, if, you, if the patent runs out on a drug, anybody can pretty much make use the same formula and create it. So, so that is yeah. I think that's a perfect metaphor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, um, what is your unique difference of your company, Green Mountain? Versus these other companies that are making the K cups. Yeah, so so our our uh, company is called Cambio Roasters, and okay. to to we pre, Cambio is precision crafted basically to make the hopeful life balancer market segment consumer to make her and his socks go up and down, and for them to say, "Wow, that's my K cup brand," and we have a handful of super cool differentiators, which we, we call her hope. That's our avatar. So the hopeful life balancer is the market segment. 
21% of existing K-cup consumers. And um, she basically is called hopeful because she's leaning into people and planet values with her purchases. So think of method detergents and Chobani yogurts and Ben and & Jerry's and ice creams and seventh generation paper towels, et cetera, Earth Breeze laundry sheets, et cetera. And she's called a life balancer, you guys, because she's not a raging environmentalist. She's not chaining herself to a nuclear power plant. She gets that not every uh, purchase is perfect, but this is the insight. The big aha is whenever she can move a purchase from the yucky column, quotes with quotes around it, to the good column with quotes around it, she gets a dopamine hit. And especially when she can do that without sacrificing taste or price, it's going to likely be one of her preferred brands. And Cambio is precision crafted, as I articulated a moment ago, to be her dream coffee brand. And we start with the best Arabica beans that can be sourced in the world by one of the most famous coffee people in the world and lovingly small batch roasted. And we put it in the most environmentally responsible K-cup that, that, that's available in the world with the easiest um, and, and the easiest to recycle. And then to finish it off, we not only we don't give one or zero percent, but we give 20 percent of our profits to 10,000 struggling coffee farming families. And we wrap that in a super cool kind of Ben and Jerry's esque coffee brand without uh, charging Hope a nickel more compared to her favorite K cups. That's basically wow. Cambio. Yeah, super fun. So, and and how is it distributed? In other words, are you doing it uh, in grocery yeah. stores, online, uh, where you sell? Yeah. So that's um, uh, currently we're one of the fastest growing K cup brands in the country. We have a big presence on e-commerce would be on our site, cambioroasters.com, of course, and Amazon, who sells billions of cups. And so that's a really exciting outlet. And then we are beginning to be available um, in the world's finest grocery stores and mass merchants. Today, we're available in about 1,500 doors, primarily in the primarily on the East Coast at, at this point, Peter, but but growing rapidly with, with uh, distribution. So in the next 36 months, we should be pretty ubiquitously available where wherever your, your shoppers are shopping. And, and um, can you, um, unless you have an, an agreement with somebody, can you tell us some of the brand name stores that we might have heard of? Or Yeah, so on the east coast um in the southeast were were anchored by a beautiful kroger uh brand called harris peter which along with okay. public sort of dominates the southeast in the in the new england area um there's a big holding company called alho del Hayes, and uh we have two in new england and middle atlantic we have two beautiful chains called hannaford's and giant martin we also have uh wife filling as a key player in the in the in the Middle Atlantic, and then Lowe's stores uh, also in the uh, Southeast. Well, I mean, I, I know I've, I've gone to Publix. I think they're pretty big in Florida, as, as I recall. Um, yeah, huge. Well, that, that that's pretty. And, and you, how long have you been available? Like you started what five years ago? Yeah, we've actually been, the the e-commerce business is about four years old, and the grocery penetration is about a little a year and a half old. Wow. Well, oh, that, that, that's pretty good and pretty impressive to get into those big, big, big chains. How many employees do you currently have? So this is the, this, this is a funny answer. So the dream team of our friends and colleagues, um, we, we all, um, um, you know, have been working in the K-Cup biz for more than a decade or a decade and a half. And we, we all joined hands to, 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 to accomplish our dream and we're virtually distributed everywhere. But no one's technically an employee. Everyone's uh, just an investor and team member. Well, well that, that's very impressive. We, we do have to take a break and listen to the S. Brian Radio Show on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Like, no, the station in the world. 
Uh, and with that note, I'm turning it well, over to my co-host, Tracy. Tracy has a couple of questions she wants to ask Kevin, and Kevin has some answers. So let's go. <laughs> well, I would say that Candia Roasters is like no other coffee roaster in the world. Um, because what I want to ask him about, because it's just, I know there's a lot of buzz around sustainability and single-use plastics, first of all. So not to be a downer, but um, I think you might actually turn this into an upper. Um, but, you know, can you address the environmental concerns around single-use plastics and how, how you as a company are addressing that? Yeah, Tracy, thanks. So so if we, if we helicopter up to 30,000 feet, our – worldview so that sort of contextualizes our our efforts our worldview is that the market economy or capitalism is is not inherently evil though a lot of my peers would would advocate for, uh, for that position we we don't view it as inherently evil we view it as a powerful system that's inherently agnostic and it's just a system that's optimizing like any biological system and it's interesting, as you unpack that, there are three sources of capital, three capital inputs to what we call the market economy, and those are human, environmental, and financial. Those are the three capitals that go into the system. As we're raised um, today, we're taught that financial capital optimization should be done at the expense of the, of the uh, other two, and we have a, 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 a triple bottom line difference. We think that that's um, that the system would like us to think that way and operate accordingly. But our point of view is that we can create organizations that can compete, brands that can compete on the national stage, which is hard to do, but that respect all three capitals, human, environmental, and financial, and in fact think there might actually be a one plus one plus one equals ten relationship. They might be sort of symbiotic. As you – and and, and – our thought is, rather than just being another smart critic of the market economy, let's get into the real world of creation and um, and see if we can create brands and companies that become one of the many thousand points of light to show that it's, it's possible. And, and you know, Tracy, what's interesting is when you do that, funny energy happens. When, when you're working for a purpose bigger than yourselves, there's a certain customer group that really attracts, and there's a certain employee group that that really attracts, and it becomes a really, really powerful thing. So from that context, as we think about sustainability and reimagining the iconic K-Cup for the next 25 years, and I'm sorry this is long-winded. I'll try to be really quick. As you, oh, as no, you look you're, at it's so plastics, interesting. Oh, thanks. As you look at plastics and single-use uh, plastics, one of the key learnings is that even even though for all of us who are going to the efforts of sorting our um, disposables and putting them in the curbside recycle bin, whether that's aluminum cans or plastics or paper or cardboard, which is phenomenal, right? Um, that sort of circular system. I mean, how cool is that? With plastics, there's an unfortunate reality, which makes me sad really sad, which is that because China is no longer buying downside, downcycled recycled plastics and because recycled plastic resins are actually slightly more expensive than virgin resins, only about 8%, 8 percent, 8, 8 percent of plastics that are in our curbside recycling in the U.S. end up in another product. So that means, wow. unfortunately, I know it brings tears to your eyes. Unfortunately, 92% of plastics take another trailer truck ride from the recycling center and end up in the landfill where they last for, you'd have to look it up, whatever 100,000 years they last. So, so part of the Cambio quest, which will, which we can talk about in, in the future is to soon be the only national uh, brand uh, not uh, of K-Cups that work beautifully in your Keurig brewing system and deliver all that convenience and taste without being in single-use plastics. 
I mean, that, I love what you said, though, about how the, it's an energy movement of sorts, because I think a lot of people think, of course, the, the logistics and the tactical pieces of the single use and the environmental impact and sustainability, but I don't think that they necessarily focus on what you were saying, which is that you're, you know, it, it's a certain draw for a certain type of an employee, a certain type of consumer. It requires a certain type of leadership. So I'd love for you to, we have about 60 seconds, I'd love for you to just highlight what is the the difference in the leadership capacity to really attract that energy on the consumer and the team building side. So I, I think as you're evaluating leadership teams, there are, uh, there are groups of us and there's, pl- there's plenty of people who have this feeling in their heart, which is, boy, I wish I, wish I could, we, we all love to win. I wish I could create winning companies and brands that also aligned with the way I feel about my fellow, um, my fellow humans. And, the, and align with the way I feel about our precious uh, small planet. And, and what's interesting, even though, even though we're socialized, like as I was growing up, just to be very blunt, thinking of the other capitals, human and environmental, was seen as, I mean, you had to be a hippie or you had to be you know, off the beaten path or driving an egg-shaped electric car or some doggone thing. Now, now today's modern consumer and today's modern employee are looking for products that they align with those values and companies that align with those values. And as I said a moment ago, so I'm being repetitive, but it's powerful, which is a big part of our human condition is we are supremely motivated to work for causes that are bigger than ourselves. Yes, and I think you I love the point that you made about the what we might call for lack of a better descriptor, the traditional business model was and not always focused on neither the environment nor the human capital capital piece of it, but in recruiting and human resources now, it's almost an, it's not a nice to have anymore, it's a need to have, right? To be able to say that your company delivers on those initiatives. Yeah, I, yes, I totally agree, vehemently agree. I wish that was true for everybody. And then the other thing that's funny about people is they're really smart and they have a great BS meter. So we like to say transparency is tasty. So if you're going to make those claims, they have to be actually transparently true because people are smart, just employees and customers, and they'll see through it. Yes, 100%. Well, we're speaking of smart, we're going to take a break to learn about our sponsor because our sponsor actually makes you smarter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. That's part of their guarantee. Um, actually, really one thing that I love, I'm going to kind of make a, a silly connection here. We're talking with Kevin, of course, and, and the, the Keurig Cups, the Keurig Machines, Cambrio Brewing. Um, everybody's looking for convenience, and that's what's so great about what Keurig offers. Very convenient. And you can find that with LegalSteps.com, L-E-G-A-L-S-T-E-P-Z.com. They make it very convenient. I did this course um, in probably a little less than two hours uh, in the comfort of my own home. On a Saturday morning, kids were occupied. I grabbed a cup of coffee from my Keurig too, Peter. And um, and I was I was able to, I really did. I was able to kind of go at my own pace and work at my own convenience, which was wonderful. I could see Peter on the screen. He would kind of screen share, if you will, so I could see what he was looking at and then what I needed to be working on. And it was almost as if he was right there next to me in my kitchen, helping me through these courses. If you are thinking about starting your own business, Business and you don't know where to begin, this is where you need to start at LegalSteps.com. They are online courses. You can, again, work at your own pace, work at what's convenient for you. Obviously, you're busy with maybe another job, kids, spouse, dog, what have you. You've, you've got a busy life, so work at your own pace. Classes are affordable. They're less than $150. You're not
not going to break the bank when you're trying to do this. You can form a trademark, LLC, S Corporation course. All courses are reviewed by an attorney. So you know that you're in good hands. You're not just kind of out there on your own just researching something without real experience. And you're going to have 30 years plus experience and knowledge with the experts at LegalSteps.com. If you find that you can't form a business, you're just stuck hitting a wall, they will just do it for you. They're going to take your hand and say, look, this is how we're going to get from A to B. And you're going to do it with ease. And you're going to be so happy that you took this course. It's the best $150 you can spend. If you're just trying to get started, check out LegalSteps.com. Again, it's L-E-G-A-L-S-T-E-P-Z. That's with a Z dot com. Well, thanks, Jen. And thanks yes. to Legal Steps. You bet. We certainly appreciate that they're uh, financing us. Um, Tracy? Yeah, so we started to talk, we talked about the human resource um, side of the practices around sustainability and um, the environmental initiative. Can you talk us through some of the business strategy initiatives? Is it make it more expensive? Expensive? Do you build it into your business model? A lot. I think a lot of companies think that they aspire to be environmentally friendly and sustainable and participate in recycling. But then I think there's always that fear around the cost factor and how much does that affect the bottom line of the company? Yeah. Oh, that I love that. Uh, first, I want to say I think legal step sounds like totally cool. Um, that could streamline. <laughs> uh, that could have streamlined a bit part of our project four or five years ago so that's awesome um um so so this is a really rich subject area there are a couple things come to mind the first is um in a recent article in forbes they did a fantastic job articulating the purchase propensities of these new modern emerging consumers and th- th- again, if if, the, if your claims are transparently true, surprisingly large percentage of U.S. consumers are willing to pay 5, 10, 20 percent more for a pr- product. We don't just say environmentally sound products, but it's pro- I think it's more intellectually interesting to say it's product it's they're buying pro from they're buying products from companies that they feel align with their values with their worldview or their aspirations for for our world and and that's what they're looking for they're looking to put their dollars to work and and by making purchases helping them helping them do good so data point number one tracy that's fascinating is it's easy to for all of us traditional business people to underestimate the price elasticity of actually being a company people can really get behind, number one. Number two, and this is really interesting, in in the U.S. today, according to all of our proprietary Cambio Roasters uh, research, which again, we talked about me being a marketing strategy nerd, so I apologize, it, it, uh, something really jumps out at you. For most of U.S. shoppers, when you tell them it's the environmentally responsible or sustainable alternative, they, it, it's, um, we would say as researchers, it's very highly correlated with a belief, which means they also think that, dot, 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 it's either going to taste worse, not clean as well, um, be way more expensive. So today, most of our shoppers are trained that that's a trade-off that they're going to have to make. And the, 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 um, the synergy of, of combining like a Venn diagram of those two points I just made, so if you ram those two circles together, at the intersection of that is a magic elixir. I mean, it's literally a magic elixir, which is delivering to the, con- to the shopper, to the consumer, to the customer, to the person – the people, uh, of companies and products with values they can get behind without sacrificing taste or price. And that's like strapping a lunar rocket to your back and lighting the fuse. That's just an amazing uh, um, energy but, and, and an intersection that we as business people need to all pay attention to. 
Now, another point I would share is, is that for most people in product development and innovation and branding and marketing in big, powerful brands and big and Fortune 500 companies, which is where I've spent most of my life, it's, it's, uh, there's a thing called top, tall poppy syndrome. Have you heard that phrase? Which is an Austra- it's an Australian phrase that I'm um, uh, gleefully ripping off, which is that the, the poppy that sticks its head up above the field gets its head chopped off. So for, oh. <laughs> so for employees or innovators to suggest to large corporate America that we do things that are better for people and better for the planet is actually a personally risky proposition and has to be done uh, very carefully because the, the worldview of the vast majority of, of, of people running most of the organizations is, the, uh, is that that's a, a, a risky proposition and may in fact hurt earnings in spite of the perspective I just shared about that, about that magic elixir. Wow. I, I mean, that there's so much there. I, I don't, I mean, the whole idea of that, that risk situation, I think that it's, it's got to be a big inhibitor, right? It, it, it's huge because Remember, for most of us, we say we're working for company XYZ or whatever. Actually, we're all in the career, personal career optimization business. And you, and you want to be successful. And you don't want to do something stupid. So pretty soon you learn that, the, that, that that's going to be risky behavior, which is why, which is why frequently um, large organizations struggle with innovation for, for that, among a number of other reasons. But that's a big predictor of why and and they let the entrepreneurs duke it out and and then they buy the the winner but if you look at organizations now oh this is funny you guys like when i was growing up you couldn't get a, a mcdonald's hamburgers and doritos and sodas and stuff in your in your mouth fast enough now our kids come over and they take everything out of our refrigerator that doesn't have an organic label in it so i don't know what the heck how how we're going to sell the new generation of, of of kids in ten years all those products, but that's a huge opportunity. And if you notice what the consumer packaged goods companies are buying, look at what they're acquiring: better for you, better for the world uh, products, almost as fast as entrepreneurs can build them. Uh, so it's awesome. And then if I could. Just say one at one other. Well, we're going to take a break. Actually, thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll break. Yeah. Come back with that point. We keep everyone in suspense, but we're about to take a break. Peter, <laughs> thank you, and welcome back. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Before we took a break, Kevin was telling us one more point, and we want to know what that point is because we are waiting in anticipation. I couldn't even go to the bathroom; I had to wait. So tell us what it is. Oh my God, that was unnecessary. <laughs> oh my God. I wonder. I wonder what E that is. <laughs> Emergency. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. So, um, so for for the aspiring entrepreneurs that may be listening, this is really exciting. Um, in the in the capital markets today, there's drastically more capital looking for better for you and better for the world ideas than there are investment opportunities. So there's a big void that we all can fill, and within that, just just make sure as you're thinking about investors, make sure that you're creating an investable proposition that they can say yes to which can't just be a hope and a wish and a dream. You have to go through the phases of proof of concept um, and, and um, making sure that the, that that you have product market fit with the consumers and all the other growth phases that there's lots of great published literature about, but then being able to, and having a business model that, that makes sense and knowing what an investable proposition means for an investor that said, your idea is is amazingly easily fundable uh, today, which is so exciting. 
Yes, that, that is just, I mean, this interview mm-hmm. in general has just been mind-blowing for so many reasons. And I know that our audience is just like have, salivating to really continue this conversation. What would be the best way for people to get in touch with you to just ask more questions, get more insight on innovation? There's so many things that you could um, connect with our audience on. What would be that best way? Yeah, so su- su- uh, really fun. So f- first off, I want to make sure that um, people are able to go and check out the super cool K-Cup brand called Cambio Roasters at CambioRoasters.com. And for your for everyone listening today, uh, we decided to do something fun since it's since it's the 29th of February today. We we decided our as as you check out on Cambio Roasters, use the code uh, Leap Year, all one word, Leap Year. And for today and tomorrow, it's 30% off all of our K-Cups, which is at Anne's and my cost, which is um, which is really exciting. And then don't forget to log on in January, not log on, but visit in January, and that shows how old I am, www. No, so to make sure to visit in July on either the website or Amazon and check out what's going to be the biggest innovation in coffee since the K-Cup, it's going to be mind-blowing. And, and then relative to your actual question, sorry about that, you can contact me, Kevin, at CambioRoasters.com. Kevin at Ambio, CambioRoasters.com or Ann, A-N-N, at CambioRoasters.com. Well, we might just have to have you back on in July to talk more about that amazing animation Ooh, that's it. coming our way. Yeah, and uh, But it. in the meantime... Yeah, we would love that, too. And in the meantime, um, don't forget that you can get this, uh, the on-demand version of this amazing live radio show today on our podcast, and that is the Ask Brian podcast. And, of course, A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N. So just look for Ask Brian podcast on any of the platforms where you listen to your favorite shows, and we will be right there. And, of course, if you want to leave us one of those five-star reviews, we'll take it. And in the meantime, um, Peter, you want to take us out? Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. We'll have to have you back on. You're listening to KHS 1220 98.1 FM, the Ask Brian Show. Over and out.